So for the final day of the class, I've got a few, uh, a few things in mind to do. Let me start my notes, and then we'll get started. All right, so um, for today, I've been uh, talking about that there's many ways to make a website, and any kind of website can be optimized. But I've been recommending a certain way to make your website. What, what has been that way? WordPress. WordPress, yes. So we're going to talk today about uh, WordPress recommendations. Now, of course, if you've got a different platform, Squarespace, Joomla, etc., these might not apply exactly the same. Uh, because WordPress is so modular, it uses plugins and such. I'm going to recommend some plugins. Uh, some advice on WordPress in general. If you don't have WordPress, uh, you can probably still apply some of the concepts I'm going to talk about. But I mention again WordPress because it's like a 30% market share globally. 30% uh, of websites of the world use WordPress. Uh, it's very powerful. It can have many features. It's modular. You can uh, upgrade it into various uh, features. So that's the one I recommend. I'm going to talk about that. I'm also uh, going to touch on blogging, how it helps your business. And then lastly, we're going to talk about real world, how should we call this? We'll call this, uh, remember that old TV show, Pimp My Ride, uh, <laughs> where Exhibit would uh, make your car cool. You, you bring him your old junky car, and then he would make it cool. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, pimp my site. What's a synonym for pimp? Upgrade. Upgrade my site. So uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, you can. We will have volunteers. If you would like, if you have a site that exists at the moment. You can volunteer, and I'll put it up on the screen, and I'll give it a quick uh, SEO analysis, and we'll talk about your site, and maybe do's and don'ts that you have, and room for improvement. So that's what's in store for today. All right, so as for WordPress recommendations, so WordPress uh, uses plugins. Plugins. Now, if you've taken my other classes, some of it might be a little redundant. Uh, but repetition is good because uh, practice makes perfect. Plugins are mini apps that add more features to your site. If you need something that your site doesn't have out of the box, You can probably find a plugin to handle it. So there's so many plugins. Uh, have you been to any websites where you're visiting the website for a moment and then there's a pop up in the corner that says, Hi, would you like some help? Let's chat. Well, that chat feature can be added to your site in WordPress. A plugin will let you do that to chat live with your customers. Yeah, there's a pretty cool one where you get an alert on your phone that someone's on your site. Would you like to start a chat? And then so you can add a plugin for that. There's plugins that uh, let you do e-commerce. You want to sell products? There are plugins that will let you sell real or virtual products. Most plugins are free to try and have a paid version. Most plugins are freemium. Have you heard of that term? There's free, of course. There's premium. There's freemium. And that means, right, the free one is completely uh, zero cost. The premium one is uh, a, some sort of payment, paid plugin. Some sort of payment which ranges from a variety of prices of five dollars to five hundred dollars, just huge range. And the freemium is starts free, 
has updates or upgrades. So I see more and more that plugins are under the freemium model. You get, you, you get a version of the plugin that works very well for free. Then you need a little bit of extra, and that's when you pay. And the extra might be uh, just one feature that I needed. I needed it to send emails to 10 people instead of one. I needed it uh, to save you know, five uh, backups instead of one. The free one might work well enough, but then the extra stuff, that's the freemium version, that's the one you, you pay for. Plugins are made by individual, individual developers or um, developer studios. What I mean here is any person can uh, make a plugin and put it out there. Someone just on the side, my day job is uh, I'm, I'm a waiter, and then on the side I make. Uh, WordPress plugins and, and I sell them and such. Or they come from big established companies that, that have a team of programmers working on them. So they're made by individuals. They are third party software. Not created or endorsed by the official WordPress company. Which is called automatic. Yes, two T's. Automatic. The the inventor of WordPress is Matt Mullenweg, and his company is Automatic. So therefore, if these are third-party software, therefore tech support comes from the plugin developer. And often, when you upgrade to the paid version. That's often the big incentive to pay for a plugin. I want it to work a certain way. It's conflicting with something else. I, I need help on how to use it exactly for my purposes. And I can't figure it out just reading the documentation. I can upgrade to the paid version of the plugin. And that's when you then get tech support from the official company, the developers. So I'm going to show you an example of a site. And some of the plugins that I have on the site uh, tell you why I like them, why I recommend them. If any of you have recommendations on plugins, then I'll gladly take them. So I've got a site here. Um, you can check this if you'd like. Uh, this is my one of my personal sites on one of my hobbies. So vmcampus.com slash blog. I've got a WordPress site here. Uh, I talk about my hobbies, comic books, uh, technology and stuff. So OK, there's a video up there. There's blog posts. Um, not as updated as I would like, because th that always happens in terms of uh, your as, a, as someone that teaches this and works for companies that does the that that does this, uh, it's often that other people's sites are more up to date than my own, <laughs> and you can probably relate to that with your own businesses. So, it's a blog. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about blogs a little later, uh, but this site is WordPress. So, um, showing you here the dashboard when I'm logged in, uh, my stats and such. I'm going to go over to plugins and mention a few a few plugins that I feel are useful. So the first one that I'll put here, well, I'll write them down, then I'll backtrack to explain them. We've got advanced database cleaner, a kismet code snippets duplicator. Insights, Jetpack, Redirection, 
regenerate thumbnails um, social media widget and Yoast. All right, so you don't need every one of these plugins on your site. Let me explain these, and then we'll talk about how they might be useful for your site. So I could say here, examples of useful plugins, WordPress plugins. Not all are required for your site. So there are many factors in SEO nowadays, as we've talked about. It often comes back to content. But there are things uh, ancillary to that. Remember that we talked about that a site that is older can have a little bit more social or a little bit more SEO clout. If you and your competitor both created a site in the exact same month, the search engine then has a little bit of a challenge to differentiate which is the better <coughs> site if both of them are created the exact same time. If both of them are the exact same content, I'm a realtor and someone else is a realtor. A realtor in San Diego versus another realtor in San Diego. Again, the search engine has difficulty. Well, which of these two is going to be better for the customer? They have to have their algorithm figure that out. One of the factors was the age of your site. So there are things besides your content. The speed of your site is another thing that is important for SEO. So WordPress has everything of your site stored in a database. And as you add content, delete content, rename pages, rename files, as you use your site on a regular basis as an administrator, the database could get kind of like um, full of content that is not used often, uh, that is just laying about. So we've got a plugin that helps you clean that up to optimize your database so that it's fast. Because everything that your site is comes from your database. And if your database isn't running well, then your site is not running well. If your site is slow and buggy and all of that, that could affect your SEO, your rankings on the search engines. So Advanced Database Cleaner uh, helps you clean your database, speeding up your site. So when you work on a page in WordPress, it saves every instance of changes. Every time you make a change, it saves a backup, a simple backup of every page you edit. So you have like seven versions of your About page, and maybe 12 versions of your Home page. And all of that is taking up space in your database. With Advanced Database Cleaner, it can let you clean that up to keep the latest and one backup of your last copies of your database. To show you what that looks like, I've got the plugin right there, WPDB Cleaner. So it's looking at mine right here. So under General Cleanup, it says, OK, revisions. In total, there are 12 revisions of different files. And I can see exactly which files those are. So in this case, um, available in Pro version. OK, so there are 12 ones there. Uh, there are seven drafts. So apparently, there's seven things that I was going to work on that I never finished. OK, seven drafts. Uh, as you work on a file, when it, if you don't click Save Draft, it can save an auto draft for you. Those add up as well. Uh, there's one spam comment. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the dashboard transient feed is. I never really looked it up, but OK, it's listed there. And if there's any other things like um, uh, orphaned uh, metadata and such, it'll, it'll be there. So for the paid version, it can show you exactly what what are those things it's recommending you to clean up. And I, you, I've used this plugin enough that I trust that simply, OK, I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to click Clean. I won't do it just yet, because it says, before doing any cleanup, please make sure you have a backup of your database. And I'll come back to that. I'm just, doing, I'm just looking at these plugins alphabetically. But this um, would clean that up, 
speed up a few things on that are kind of leftover detritus on the site. I have also another screen for optimization. Uh, so here, because files are added and removed and renamed and all of that on a constant basis in WordPress, here's also in the database, here are some um, amount of data that um, that is being stored. Um, now, this is using apparently the European separators, which is a comma rather than a dot, which is confusing because obviously if I see a comma, I, I think that's 29,000, but that's actually 29.05. It's just that apparently in other parts of the world they use a comma instead of a period. So I hear 154 kilobytes uh, in this options. So this is again just like kind of um, unoptimized data that could be optimized and I would select it all and then do optimize but again before doing anything to my database I would want a backup of my database which I'll cover in a moment you can have it scheduled that on a on a certain basis uh, you will have it do this for you but you'll eventually get to the part about if you would donate some amount of money to the theme author then uh, I mean the plugin author you would get the pro version with more features So that was the advanced database cleaner. Yeah. What terms do you clean it? Uh, in three months? Like, uh... It wouldn't hurt to do it once a month. So let me add the note there. Clean once per month. That that'd be fine. Every three months, that that'd be okay too. I would say it's going a little bit too long in between cleanings, you know, doing this every week and such, that I wouldn't do that because then defeats the purpose of speeding things up. This is going to run a various steps and operations and use resources to clean itself, so you don't want to run it that often. Once a month is fine. Question? Yes, that's the one I usually use for my sites or client sites. That seems to work good enough um, because the extra stuff that it says like under um, under tables. The thing with this is your database is full of a variety of fields and you can go into individual fields with the pro version. So if you want to get that detailed you could. But in general just using the the general cleanup and the optimize has worked pretty well. I haven't tried the premium to really compare but as, as usual, usually the paid version is a little better, but you can get by with the free one pretty well. Yeah? Should you do this um, off hours? I mean, does this take a while? This, it, it doesn't really take that long, but it is a good idea to also do it off, off hours. Uh, you, would, you would need to know when, when your site gets the most traffic and try to do it you know, early in the morning or late at night. I don't believe it goes into maintenance mode like if you use other if you do your updates but this usually can happen very quickly like literally like two seconds unless you've got a website that has never been up uh, never been optimized in like five years two years or whatever then that might take a little while and that's why I might do it in off hours let me jump to this one here first because um, it's this one is very valuable for a lot of these other things. Duplicator, make a perfect copy of your site. Use for backups and or migration. If you want to move your WordPress site from one server to another, let's say you bought uh, your service at GoDaddy and you're no longer happy with it and want to move to Bluehost, you'll be able to move your name, victorsbakery.com, from GoDaddy to Bluehost easily. But you won't be able to move the data of your site easily from one to the other. I, I do see that these companies offer uh, their uh, movement or their migration services, but usually they are literally hundreds of dollars, which you can do completely for free if you know how to do it. Um, if you know how to do it with the right plugins and such, 
and that this is one plugin to let you do that. It makes a copy of your whole site. All the thousands of files that are your site get compressed into two files. You move those files to the other server, you run the reinstallation uh, file, and then it brings back your site. Well, if you don't need to migrate, if you don't need to move your site from place to place, you get backups. It lets you make a perfect copy of your site. Yes, the completely free version works completely well, but my recommendation is this is definitely the one that you want to do the upgrade to. Recommendation get pro. The pro version, which I think is $39 or $37, something like that. And what that one is, yeah, one time uh, one uh, once a year fee of $39 uh, because can be set on a schedule. So I would have to, with the free one, I would have to log in once a month, make my backups. I forgot this month. Well, with the pro version, you set a schedule. It will automatically do it on your schedule. And also, backs up to external cloud services. Um, it can copy itself to your Google Drive, your OneDrive, your your Dropbox, so you've got a copy of it safe somewhere. So that one I definitely recommend go with the paid version. Yeah. So if you go for any pro version of these, you can go on duplicate, uh, may not duplicate the you know how you have to buy a plugin for one site and have a plugin for another site. If you buy a pro version, you can use that license to the other license. You have to read the license of the plugin on some of them. Like Duplicator Pro, you buy the pro version and you can use it to up to three different sites. Mm -hmm. Other ones let you use it up to five and up to infinite other ones. And other ones, one license, one site. It just depends on the particular plugin. Someone like you, you need to have multiple licenses because you're mm -hmm. more than three sites. Yeah. Can you talk for a minute about some of those external cloud services that you mentioned? I know Dropbox, but a lot of those others are never. Well, they're they're all the same sort of thing. Just you know, cloud drives or cloud services, um, just online storage. And that's what it is. It's a it's a hard drive online, and you can get it from Dropbox. Google Drive, OneDrive, what else? iCloud. Yeah, usually it starts off with only about 2 gigabytes. Well, Dropbox, I think it starts with 2 gigabytes. Some of these other ones start with 10 gigabytes Then you can, for free. Then you can pay to upgrade to get a terabyte and all of that. So it's just an online storage solution. Yeah. I know that OneDrive is an open source platform. Hmm. Um, not, I'm, I'm not sure in their case, but what, what it makes it sound like, when something is open source, that means that the code that, that is underlying below the technology is available for you to view and edit and repurpose. So for example, I create an app, a calculator app and I make it open source, meaning I give out my code of how my app works. I, I sell my calculator, sure, but I also then give away the source, the source code. It's open. And the purpose of that is that then someone else might take the code and add more features to the calculator app and put that out. So open source is just the big idea of uh, the software, we want to help everyone. I'm going to put my software out there. If someone is smarter than me, help me improve my code. Let's share it and, and put it out there. So I hadn't heard that OneDrive is open source, but if it is, great. But what it is is that if I know the code, I can rewrite the app to make it do different things. Question? Um, could you use an external storage drive instead of the cloud? You could. It's just the extra step that you do the backup of your site. You download the, the, the backup file off of the server, off of the internet. You download it to your desktop, and then you put it into your backup, uh, your backup drive on your, in your desk. Yeah. yeah. So the online storage, I can put a file there and say, give you access to it, and you can go and grab that file. 
Yes. Because I transfer a lot of large files at times. And so I could get an account on any one of them, put the file there, and then allow somebody access to that file. Exactly. Use it to share files to other people. I often have trouble uh, if I need to send a zip file to students. I, I, our college email system automatically blocks zip files because viruses can come in zip files. So instead of fixing that, they just throw the, the baby out with the bathwater and don't allow us to send zip files. So I have to then put it, I, I have the option then of putting that zip file into my Dropbox and then sending the link to the student and then the student downloads it off of that link. So these cloud services can be very useful. Backing up your own data, sharing something. Like I want to share 50 photos from my family vacation to everyone. I'm not going to attach 50 photos to my email. I'm going to upload them to my iCloud and then send people the link to it and then they'll be able to look at it. They're all completely comparable. Uh, the only recommendations I would give is just like what do you already have uh, if you already have Apple devices you already have iCloud you don't you don't even know it you might, you might not be using it if you've got uh, like a Outlook or Hotmail you've already got OneDrive it comes with Microsoft accounts if you've got a Gmail account you've already got Google Drive Dropbox is the only one you kinda have to go a little bit out of your way although it is the more famous one it's been around longer than all of them um, and uh, they're, they're all good, and any one you choose will work just fine. You just have to compare with, about their storage. And I think the only drawback is that the OneDrive, to my knowledge, gives you the least space yeah. for free, two gigabytes or so. The, the, other ones, the other ones give you like eight or ten. And then on all of these, you can upgrade them. And they're like for nine, like nine dollars a month, you get like a terabyte or something. Uh, so it just depends. Yeah. Box, yeah, that's another one. I think that one's even older than Dropbox, but uh, I remember it as Box.net. But yeah, there's Box. Have to pay a month or something like I'm not sure if they do the free one anymore. I'm not sure if they do the free one anymore, but I've got an old account from Box that I have grandfathered in that was 50 gigabytes that I never use, but I still have it. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's all of these cloud services out there, and they're all comparable. Just check the check the. Um, the, uh, the, the the space that you get. Mm -hmm. So each Gmail account that you have, if you have multiples, would give you X amount of space in Google Drive. Yes. Every Google Drive account is linked to a specific Gmail account. Yeah. You can have multiple Hotmail accounts and you have multiple OneDrives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so duplicator is one of the important ones. Uh, I, that'd be a good one to mention first before these other ones because that one lets you make a perfect copy of your site. Then you could do one, the one like database cleaner because it, it even told you itself there. We're going to clean your database just in case, make sure you've got a backup of it. Duplicator makes a backup of it in case something gets cleaned too much and oh I needed that I actually needed that draft from two months ago that I keep telling myself I'm gonna finish well I can bring it back with duplicator a kismet helps stop spam on your site <coughs> analyzes and deletes spam messages and spam senders so if you've got a website where you can allow people to comment on your site maybe you've got products that you sell and you want people to give you testimonials and reviews on your products well that might invite spammers these spam bots are running 24 hours a day scouring the the web trying to find places to inject their spam into their links that will hijack your browser or give you a virus and all of that. Well, something like Akismet will monitor that and help prevent the spam from being added to your site. 
Uh, this is another one that of course is free and you can get the paid version some of these have donations it's the same thing it's saying you know would you like to donate five dollars to the developer well it's the same thing as you know paying five dollars to buy it and I would recommend it because if all of these are very affordable and if they really help your site I would recommend to uh, help these developers and uh, pay for the product So, oh, just to show how it looks like, okay, under Duplicator Pro, uh, I would just easily go here, create a new package. In my case, it's, it's going to scan my site and it's going to find every file. So right now, my site is 156 megabytes in total uncompressed. The database is 1.37. And uh, this, then if I initiate the build, it would make a copy of everything. And then I can download it for uh, my own storage. Or if I've got it set up, I can put it in, in my Dropbox. A Kismet looks like this. So. In the past six months, 147 spam was blocked. In all time that I've had it uh, installed, it's blocked 31,000 pieces of spam. And it's worked 99.95% of the time. Oops, you don't want to see that. And um, in you see how it's decreasing. That's good. It's, it's running on the site, and in these past six months, it's been um, filtering out what, what spam could be going to my account. Is that the free one that you're using? Mm -hmm. All right, so the next one, code snippets. This one's, a, this one's kind of advanced. Um, let me show what that looks like. Oh, here it is, snippets. Uh, so code snippets are, are um, let's see, what's, what's the best way to explain it? Um, an easy, clean, and simple way to add code snippets to your site. No need to edit your themes function PHP. So sometimes you need to do advanced things on your site and add code. Code snippets lets you do that. So allows you to edit your functions PHP file easier. If you need to add PHP or JavaScript or HTML to your site, this plugin lets you do so a lot easier. WordPress is a software that shields you ultimately from the underlying code of a website. All websites are made out of a variety of code. If I go to google.com and, and if I'm a super hacker like this, I can look at the code of uh, Google. There's the code behind the scenes. You know, it looks like such a simple site, but behind the scenes, it is 352 lines of code. I said, if you're a super hacker, you can do this. No, just, just kidding. You can, you can right-click. You can right-click a website, and, it, and you can say view page source. And then you, or you know, or the keyboard shortcut control U. So, for example, watch this. I'm going to hack the college's website. Look at that. I'm looking at the code. So, um, right-clicking uh, view source on most browsers open up opens up the source code. That doesn't mean it's open source, that's something else. But here I'm looking at the code of the website and you can see, oh, the, apparently our college's website is made in Drupal, not WordPress. And all of their metadata and all of that, there's their Google code. But uh, if you need to sometimes edit some of this code, if I don't know how this quite works, if I make a mistake, 
uh, you can break your whole site by editing the code and, and changing one character. Not one command or one line of code, but actually one character. If I accidentally delete you know, this, uh, this parenthesis right here, that could break my whole site. So instead of getting into the code, I can use something like code snippets, which shields me a little better from the, from the guts of the site. by having an interface where I can add the code that is separate from everything else so that I don't accidentally delete other parts of my site. So when you, when you edit the, uh, the PHP, you got to know what you're doing with the PHP. Yeah. <laughs> this is you edit the PHP or the JavaScript. Now, the uses for it. Maybe you've got affiliate links or code. Maybe you got something that some other third party gives you saying, use this code on your website to do X, Y, and Z. I'm like, well, I don't even know where, where, where to put that code. Code snippets is for that purpose. If I need to, if I want to put in, if I'm part of an ad network or something like that, um, I can use this to put my code into my site and that will um, work better than trying to do it the old fashioned way, which is, going over here to the appearance editor and then that um, even gives you a warning heads up you appear to be making direct edits to your theme we recommend that you don't so WordPress itself now tells you we don't recommend you go here but if you know what you're doing okay great here's all of the code for your site here is on my particular site 4,000 lines of code that make up the underlying foundation of my site and that's just one of the pages if I go over here to the main home page, that's 70 lines of code. And I don't know what this means. Get footer, what is that about? Or get template part post content? Well, I don't want to edit any of that because if I, whoops, I delete that, that could delete my whole, my whole site. That could cause a problem to my whole site. So code snippets helps you uh, in, a, in a much more user-friendly way. Leave that one to the professionals. Exactly. Okay, then. Yeah. So, um, using code snippets, if I put the code into that text, um, it automatically will um, fil filter it into main code? Yeah. Okay. Usually at the end of your code. And. Um, couple of options. Uh, let it run all over the site. Only run it on the front end, only run at one time, and then you make notes on, what, on your code there. So yeah, it adds it into the rest of, this, of the code that already exists. All right, the next one, Monster Insights. Uh, easily set up and track. Google Analytics right on your site. So if you set up Google Analytics before in this class, uh, you had to uh, do a few steps. And if you use this plugin, it's a lot easier because within your site, you then connect it with your, uh, with your analytics account. And then you will see an item here, Insights. You will see directly in your website uh, some traffic right there. So apparently on the 19th of, on the 18th of May, I had, a, I had a spike in traffic on my site. That's when I did a little bit of extra promotion and such on my site. So this is Google Analytics but on my site instead of going off to Google Analytics with looking at its Byzantine interface I can see the important stuff directly on my site here so this is a plugin that lets you manage your Google Analytics a lot easier right off of your site so on that so does it get the same analytics you would get if you were just using the Google Analytics or the it's a little simplified, yes. But notice all the important ones are here. You get your page views and hits 
right away. You get a little bit more detail here also. It's up versus the last 30 days. Views are up. Uh, the duration of time people are on the site is a little down. Bounce rate. Here it shows new new users, returning customers, etc. Desktop, tablet, mobile. So when we saw that on Google Analytics, we saw that, but here it is in a little simplified way. Traffic came from YouTube and Twitter. Uh, and then right here, spam came here. Now there was traffic from the US for some reason from Bahrain and from some spam ZZ. So it's showing um, the basic ones. And let's see, view all countries. Yep, that takes me back to Google to see the full details. So it's the uh, Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights? Yes. So you don't have to go to Google Analytics, you can just use this app. Well, you need a Google Analytics account, then you link it here, and then you don't have to go to Google Analytics to see all your, your data. You get your basic data right off of your site. Okay, Jetpack. The Swiss Army Knife. Plugins, many extra features to speed up and optimize and um, secure your site. Jetpack, one, Jetpack is one of the ones that comes officially from the WordPress company, from Automatic, and it has a variety of features. So. I go show them to you over here. Jetpack. I get some basic site statistics, but the Google Analytics and all of that is way better. This would show me sim similar things. It showed here I've got the uh, malicious uh, login protection turned on. Uh, if you take the WordPress class, we learn in there that everyone by default has a specific web address that you go to to access your your website's dashboard it's just common knowledge programmed into WordPress that you can always log into your site at a certain address so therefore the hackers and the spammers are trying to get into your site from that known address with this protection from Jetpack it's analyzing, well, this is a person trying to log in that has never logged in before. That might be trouble. And so here, there have been 2,000 attempts to hack into my site in all of the times that I've had this installed, a few years. So that looks scary. 2,000 people tried to break into my site. Well, that's common. That's normal. But here, there's the protection turned on. There's other security scanning features, which notice the upgrade for that. Downtime, downtime monitoring. You can set this up for free that whenever your site goes down, it crashes for some reason, you get a notification to go off and fix it. This is telling me I need four updates. 31,000 spam has been rejected. Image performance is on. So another thing to help optimize images, that's turned on. So there are other options you can turn on. Um, let's see. If I wanted testimonials on my site, that's an extra feature to turn on there. If I wanted to create portfolios, that's an extra feature. Not, not a paid one. I just mean it's a feature that I have not turned on that I, I don't need. Let's see. What are their current plans on pricing on this? Personal, $39 a year, you get all of this. Premium, professional, etc. Redirection. OK, so broken links hurt your rankings, your SEO. If you 
rename files and change permalinks on your site, it may break your links. So renaming pages, moving files, deleting pages, create broken links. This is one of the factors you could be penalized on if you if you have these broken links. The search engines don't want to promote or rank very well a site that is broken, that has broken links, that is going to frustrate the user, that is going to annoy the user. So you want to fix broken links. Redirection helps you manage that. It's you track broken links and fix them. Here's an example. I used to have, OK, victor.com slash aboutus.html. And I decided, for whatever reason, I changed it to victor.com slash about me. I completely changed the, the address. It's the exact same content, but for whatever reason, I decided to change it. Well, that's a broken link. Because if, you, if your site has existed for a little while, you know, even a few weeks, but let's say months and years, the search engines know that page as about-us.html. And it's in their database as about-us.html. And when someone is searching for it and trying to access it, it's going to send them to a broken link. So using redirection, use redirection to create a, uh, what's it called exactly again, a 301 redirect, um, yeah, 301, uh, to create a 301 redirection. So someone visits the old, outdated, broken link, and the server automatically moves them, redirects them over to the correct place. So there's no more broken link. It happens behind the scenes pretty instantly. Someone went to the wrong page, it goes to the right page. No more broken link, not hurting your SEO. So this is how it looks like here. In the um, In the in this example, I had a link that was named this in the past, but then I renamed the link to be this to have it a little bit more SEO friendly, with a few more keywords and such. I had this version in the past that had like an extra dash. Okay, remove that over here. So there's the old link, there's the new link, and it shows here there's, there is traffic going to the old link that is being redirected to the new link. Where is that old link called city? It's gone. It's not, it's not anywhere. It, if I'm coming into you, how would I get Get to it, to click it. It, uh, it could be coming from uh, perhaps someone bookmarked the link into their browser and they're trying to access it. From, perhaps, a historical. from a historical, yeah, from an old cached file. It could be coming from, you know, there's search engines. There's, plenty, there's many search engines out there besides Google, Bing, Yahoo. There's plenty of search engines out there that are also used a little less commonly, but those search engines might have copies of the old link as well. So from somewhere, those links exist somewhere, and here I'm redirecting them to the correct link. Um, but the last time someone used that old link was back in February. Yeah. I have some questions on that. Of course, my site's built not in WordPress, mm -hmm. but um, so one question I had is uh, the former site, I created a new site. Right? Mm -hmm. The former site was in WordPress, this one's in Wix. Uh, very different content, and I, I did all the redirects, and mm -hmm. you know they all seem to be working. Um, 
my question is, like, how long, how long should those redirects be in play? Like, I've, I've told her to keep the WordPress site alive for, like, basically a year. Mm -hmm. um, and all the known spots, you know, as we go through, are I've re gone back in and, you know, put the new URL. Because that, the other thing is that the old site had a different URL. Mm -hmm. a different URL. Mm -hmm. So just sort of in general, when you're making such a big leap, how long should the old... Well, like you said, about a year. That's a very good minimal. Okay. Um, you should still, if you have any way of monitoring those redirects, like here, this hasn't been accessed since February. It's a few months later. I would monitor, monitor, it, monitor it a little bit longer to see then if I need it or not. It doesn't hurt just to leave them, it, depending how you've got them set up. Like, you said you're going from WordPress to Wix. That might be a different thing because I, I, I wouldn't have the full answer for that because I haven't done that. But I, if it's possible, leave leave it a, a, as long as you can. It's just that there's a cost to it. You know, yeah. Hanging, so, that's, so I told her to leave it at least for a year. That, that might be enough. So, yeah. Although once in a while, I do see... Uh, that there's the the hit once in a while from a from a page I haven't had on my site in like literally ten years. Right. So there's still stragglers somewhere out there in the world that have a, a link to an a, an old file from a long time ago. Yeah. So if it's that old, who cares? But um, a, a year is a good amount, I would say. Okay. This is Yes. Yeah, the links in the old blog are still the same, broken, but they would get redirected. So the better advice on that is you should go to your blog and fix your own links. Um, redirects are very useful, but you shouldn't rely on them to do the to do that for you. But this will highlight what needs to be fixed. I'll show what needs to be fixed in the next screen in a moment. Yes. Okay. So is there in the, like Kajabi or Wix or Spreadface, and you've been with it for a year? When when you're doing the redirect, you know, since they're working on it, but when can you tell it's broken? They've been on that for a long time. Do you have to rebuild the site or? It depends. Uh, maybe just have to check a little bit more with, with what your needs are. But for example, if one site is being moved to another site um, about the recreation of it, you could try to recreate the other site with, with the same sort of links as similar to the other site you're making. So if the other site had a page called about-us, the new site I would recommend to also have a page called about-us. Try to have the same addresses from one site to the other, um, so that the the old link still, in theory, could work because it's pointing to the same kind of location about dash us. Yeah, because you come across with like those page builder sites, and sometimes my problem, like this one guy, he's doing Kajabi for a long time, and and I, you know, I probably could do the analytics around, it, but after a while. If he's starting to do his podcast and his other stuff, he's going to really outgrow his site off the file. So I you know, you can't get tell him, hey, <laughs> you can't go to that. Well, that, that's you know being positive that he would outgrow the site. I don't know. Will they get big enough that they will need to move? And if they do, then there will be an issue to be addressed at some point. It's kind of hard early on to... Uh, to have an answer because they may never get popular and what they have is what will be enough for them or they may get popular and then they do have to uh, pay or upgrade or do something more and you, you have to deal with that when you get to it. Yeah. Um, my, blogs, or my website set up with a blog that I've turned into a news feed mm -hmm. and I've used redirection to direct the people to the stories mm -hmm. on the feed. 
Um, but every time you click on the picture, the redirection takes them to a whole different site um, on that same page, on the same tab. Hmm. Is there a way to get a redirection to open to a different tab instead of redirecting it to the entire site? Perhaps, let me check something here. Edit. Uh, I don't see it in here. Because if I were setting one up here, I would say, uh, here's the old broken link. Here's the correct link. But I don't see any, I don't think I see any other op option to open in a new window. Yeah. It shouldn't. Let's see, match URL, when match redirect, through random, pass through, do nothing, target group. Yeah, I don't see that. It, there's like an extra open in a new tab. Now, the theory, from what I understand, you wouldn't want to open in a new tab because the whole point of the redirect is to make it seamless for your users that you went to the wrong link, but don't worry, here's the right link. So to open it in a new window or tab, I believe, goes against the idea of the redirect to just have it like, here's the correct thing, don't worry about it. You might, you might be thinking about, yes, I want to open things in its own window, but that would be like a normal link that could open in its own window, not a redirect. Now we could look at a little bit more on one if you'd like a little bit later, but from what I understand, I don't believe you can make redirects open in a new window. You might be able to if you do it in the old complex way of editing it on the server, because ultimately this is shielding me from the server, but perhaps on the server it can be done or settings on the server to do that. One final thing on this plugin, if I go look at 404s, this is a screen that will uh, show me some interesting information and some scary information. This is the screen that might show me what are the what are the hackers trying to hack into. Uh, so I don't see any example to show you. But this is the screen that I often see people trying to access an outdated plugin or theme. If you take the WordPress class, I talk about the importance of updating your software. And I talk in there about how uh, software needs to be updated for one of the reasons is security. Uh, all of these plugins and themes are made out of code. And someone could figure out an exploit into your site. I've noticed, and there aren't any examples here to show you because I've taken care of them, but I've noticed from this screen, not only does it help you find what are your broken links, it shows you the people that are trying to access plugins slash Super Chat 2.0. It's trying to access a plugin that is known to be broken and has vulnerabilities. Uh, so this screen, at a certain point, is kind of scary because then you're like, wow, people are trying to break into my site by accessing these files. Good thing I don't have those files. I'm not using outdated code. Yeah. yeah, but it's not that useful. It's telling me right here, someone at IP address 15869, etc., called Crawler4j from Yasser G. Now, someone, out of curiosity, we can follow that link. Some programmer has put their app over here. What is this thing? Cr source web crawler for Java. What is this? Is an open source web crawler for Java which provides a simple interface for crawling the web. Using it, you can set up a multi threaded web crawler in minutes. This sounds like <clears throat> it's someone that's making a spam bot. And they, and they put out the open source code for everyone to make their own spam bot. Now, there could be probable ways to use it legitimately. But what I'm seeing here is that some bot was crawling my site was looking at this Twitter page and that Comic-Con page, but those don't exist on my site, so it was a broken link. And it's the same IP address. If you click on that, it shows you a map, but the problem is that people can change their IP address. You can't really change your home address, it is what it is. But your IP address is your, is your home address on the internet, and that can be changed. You can change it manually, you can hide it, and oftentimes your provider changes it. Cox Cable maybe gives me a certain address, but every six months or nine months or whatever, it randomizes them for security, perhaps. So this IP address doesn't mean anything. It's just that at this moment, 
Yeah, for security, and it, there is there are legitimate purposes for it, definitely. This one apparently. Hey, what? Okay, well, I didn't hear. That. This is coming from Quebec. Uh, someone in Canada was uh, browsing my site, and there's their address. I don't know, like. Let's zoom in and look at their house right there. The Musée des Beaux Arts de Montreal. What does Beaux Art mean? Beautiful arts? Fine arts, modern arts. Yeah. So the Museum of Fine Art in Montreal. Someone on their site was browsing my site. Um, that doesn't make sense because from what I'm seeing of what this thing is, this is a web crawler. What does the web crawler do? Well, it has to further be programmed to to do something. And it's coming from uci.edu, or is that an example? Or, I don't know. This is, I don't know what this is. And then what else came in here? Uh, someone at, from Mozilla, or the Ash ARFs robot. Uh, what is that? I can maybe go find that address. And you're not going to really be able to do much with any of that data. It's just going to tell you this is a robot. It uh, identifies itself as good. Sure. It's about marketing is a web crawler that powers the 12 trillion links database of RF's online marketing toolset, which I've never heard of. So, okay, it's some other thing that's supposed to be scanning and checking SEO? Sure. Question? Are you interested in the Google search engine? Yeah. 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 Yes, on the server, there is the ability to block uh, crawlers. Uh, once you identify them, I can add crawler4j as one of the uh, blocked crawlers, and then it shouldn't be able to see my site anymore. How do you do that? You would need to go, um, you would do set up robots txt. And you'll get various tutorials on that. But it's a robots.txt file that is on your server, and it has a list of of crawlers, and you're disallowing them from visiting your site. Yes, it needs a, It needs to be set up in a specific way. It's not complex, and I'll put the link to one of these articles. This one seems fine. I'll put it in here. Redirection. Uh, this also keeps track of spam bots, so you can restrict or you can ban them from visiting your site. From your site with a robots.txt file. Now, robots.txt file is going to be a list of, of bots or, or crawl, crawlers that you don't want. These bots can easily be programmed to not identify themselves or to identify themselves as Google. And if you say block Google, OK, you're in trouble. You've blocked Google. So the robots text is not the ultimate solution, but it is a possible solution. And in this case, I'm seeing crawler4j. OK, I'm going to block that. Over here, it's identifying itself simply as Mozilla 5.0. That's Firefox. Although I do see it over here, Ash or RF Spot, however you pronounce it, AREF Spot. Okay, maybe I can glean that information from that and set myself up as a block AREFs. But it's coming at me at 5.2. Well, what happens when AREF Spot 5.5 is out? I have to write another robots.txt file entry to then block 5.5. It's not as easy as it seems, but it is a possibility to do, yes. But somewhere in that information, they're going to have to identify themselves for Nope. They can identify themselves as ZZZ or two empty spaces. This is useful. This is normally useful to figure out what are your broken links, and then you create. Uh, so I'm saying, OK, th this one is the one I need to fix. There was a page that I had here that I was selling some cards. I'm no longer selling the cards. I took the page off. Well, the links are coming in saying, well, you've got broken links. Where's that page? I need to take a moment eventually. And I go in here, and I add a redirect. And I say, that's the old broken link. I'm going to redirect it back to, back to the blog. And I might as well do it now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Fixed. 
So, the old broken link now, whatever anyone tries to go to, it's just going to go back to the blog home page. And then what I would do here is, okay, well, I've dealt with that one, let me delete that one. And I go in and delete, you know, this is the same example, just from a different day, yeah, delete that one. So now I've got a brand new item here, redirects. This is the brand one I just brand new one I created. That page is no longer relevant. I redirected it back to the blog. That one's done. It's gonna keep track here how many more hits, how long to keep it. I'll leave it forever because it's not taking up any extra resources in my case. Yeah. If you're deleting pages and products or renaming them and such, you should you should deal with that. So uh, yeah, you know, page four of this, that blog post, and all of these can be fixed, and they should be fixed. It's just that, yeah, once a month, all of this sort of like site maintenance, once a month is, is fine. Back up the site, um, check your redirects, um, database cleanup, whatever, once a month is, is good. So that one is that. Um, Let's take our first break, and then we'll look at the next three, and then go further than that. So we'll look at thumbnails, social media, and Yoast. It's 10.55. We'll take a break until 11.05, and then we'll go on.